Hey guys, my friend and I went by that old building again and it was still standing so we went back inside for another little look around and we found a few more goodies. For example, this nice vintage metal table with folding sides on it. And I got this bag of stuff. A little glass vase. Gigantic light bulb. Let's see what else do we have. That's a little coffee cup. <laughs> Not sure why my friend grabbed that, but uh, whatever. Man, I got a bunch more industrial tubes. I think these are all the same type as that, those earlier tubes. Oh, and thanks for all the uh, the comments. Filled in a lot of the details about what that what the stuff uh, actually was that we found. Ah, now this I actually know what it is, because I actually have one. Uh, I believe this is a gas thyatron or some type of control tube. ELC3J-A. The tubes I showed in the earlier video, uh, thanks to your comments, I now know are half-wave mercury rectifiers. I think the 200 volt, uh, 15 amp continuous operation. Another one of those. And another one. I guess these are slightly different. That's a C1J and this is a C3J and a C3J. And let's see what we have here. No number that I can see. wrap these well. <laughs> Huge box, I thought it was going to be a big two, but this is a 710 or 6011. I'm not familiar with this type. Looks similar to these C1Js. Alright, there's another 710, 611, another 7. 7, 10, 6, 11, and another one. And another C3J. And 7, 10. Probably the same as these guys. And finally, Electromatic Power Tube EM5. Here's the Electromatic EM5. Looks like another mercury half-wave rectifier. And here's what I think is the coolest tube in the whole lot. The GE GL7518. Check that out. It's got these uh, huge lugs on the bottom, ceramic base, and a cap on top. Alright, so that's it for the treasures from this place. Kind of PO'd it myself though, because there was a Super Nintendo there and I completely forgot it. But I don't think I'm going to go back. Now, I do have some other items I got off of eBay inside that I'd like to show you guys. Here are some more tubes I found on some type of industrial control boards that were just too big and bulky to take with me, so I just hold the tubes. Most of the tubes were inside of these protective housings. They seem to be like die cast anodized aluminum with a spring inside. And they were kind of pushed down hard onto the tubes and then twisted. As for the tubes themselves, uh, most seem to be industrial versions of more common tubes like 12AU7s. 6201, 5755, and yeah, I think there's a whole bunch of 5814s, also 5687s. Here's one of the 5814s. 
And then these little short guys, 5670s. I think they're pretty much all dual triodes. Another 5687. One octal, 6AG7. I can make use of this in some of my Admiral TVs. And finally, we've got this guy Western Electric GA51221 Relay Armature. Danger, high pressure, do not open. I think there might be some type of mercury in here. Not exactly sure what this is. I know what a relay is, I'm not sure what just a relay armature might be. So if anybody out there has some thoughts, please leave a comment. Here's one of the items I picked up recently. It's the original ad for the Admiral 20X11, not to be confused with the oh so similar 24A12. Easy way to tell them apart from the front is the 20X12 has a gold bezel, this has a white bezel, and this is the earlier set. Uh, generally it's a more desirable, more valuable set because I think they're a little bit scarcer. A while ago I picked up a reproduction of this ad and I just was not happy with the quality. I think somebody just scanned it on a flatbed scanner and then printed it out with a color inkjet printer and it just wasn't that crisp, especially with the white on black lettering. Sorry, the white lettering on the black background just did not come out that well. So when I saw this genuine ad, I pounced on it. What this is from, I imagine, is for something like Life Magazine. People take the old magazines and they cut out all the ads that look interesting and sell them on eBay. I think I'll uh, try to find a frame for this and hang it up on a wall somewhere. One of my YouTube friends north of the border very kindly sent me a little care package. He had said he was going to duplicate a couple of the RCA Red Books and send those to me, but I had no idea he was going to send me some books, including a whole bunch of these National Radio Institute pamphlets. I think these were part of like a home study course that the government put out. These, I think, were all printed 46, 47. But the content is pretty much all pre-war. Some of these are pretty fun to read too, like radio salesmanship. It tells you how to be a good radio salesman, basically. How to start your own shop and, and so on. And there's all these <laughs> tips about, oh, staying fit and, and uh, what to eat and how to exercise and then how to be, uh, project a, a confident attitude and improve your selling techniques and so on. It's kind of funny. And there's a whole bunch of stuff about acoustics and speaker design and PA systems and transmission lines and so on. Some of the more interesting ones I'm trying to find are some of the TV stuff I found especially interesting because it's all kind of pre-war stuff and a lot of the standards are <laughs> not quite right. Like there's a lot of stuff, uh, I think it's 441 lines, whereas by the time they actually were printing this they were up to 525 lines was the standard but I guess they didn't have a chance to update the content. Also I found it interesting that the IF frequency some of these early TVs used was like 9 megahertz. I think the tubes back then just couldn't do the higher 21 or 44 megahertz IF that they use later. Also I'm kind of curious as they talk about these TCR tubes throughout all these books. That's short for television cathode ray. So rather than CRT like we have been using all these years, they called them TCRs back then. Check that out. It's a 1000 watt TV transmitter. There's a nice little portable TV camera. <laughs> Alright, here's some cool TVs. I don't think any of these were ever actually brought to market. These are just kind of prototypes. 
This one, well, this one may have. It's a GE. They may have actually produced a few of these, but I don't think I've ever seen that actually. You know, for real. <laughs> This is definitely one of the cooler pamphlets in the whole stack. Radio merchandising. This talks about setting up your own shop. And they have some cool photos of early TV shops. Like this one must be in the 20s. Going by the age of the car. I actually scanned all the photos in this one and put them up on my Flickr page. There's a link on my YouTube channel to my Flickr page. If you guys want to find it. Rather fancy showroom. There's one where they're selling appliances, old refrigerators, along with the radios. There's a pretty cool store display with hundreds and hundreds of globe vacuum tubes stacked up. And this is my favorite photo of them all. We render first aid to sick radio tubes. And there's actually a, a woman in a nurse outfit. <laughs> uh, I guess she's repairing sick tubes. I like how the two guys are kind of leering at her in the background. <laughs> right. So if you can find these around uh, on eBay or something, they're kind of fun. Eventually, I'll, I think I'll scan some of the more interesting ones. You know, scan all the text and everything. Somebody might have already scanned these and put them in some archive somewhere, but I asked around and nobody knows of, uh, of such uh, an archive. People have asked me for recommendations on books to get for TVs and radios. This is definitely a good book for TVs. There were quite a few editions of this. It's Television Simplified by Milton Kiver. Milton Kiver wrote a bunch of books on TVs, uh, theory, repairing, and so on. And uh, this book in particular, I noticed there were a number of copies floating around out there. I think there's even a first edition, but uh, I didn't want to fork out quite that much money, so I think this is the second or third printing. Copyright 46, but this was printed in 47, it looks like. And again, we, get, <laughs> we have more photos of TVs that I don't think ever actually existed. Look how massive that set is. A little bitty screen up top. One of the things that's kind of neat in here is they have these fold-out schematics that are on some type of parchment. don't think it's actually vellum, but uh, I suppose it's possible. These are pretty much all pre-war designs. Just going by the, the tubes that they use. The later editions of this book and other books that he wrote uh, are a little more practical if you want to actually learn about how to service TVs because they they're, uh, they talk more about actual production models rather than these pre-war designs. It's a rather civilized group of people sitting around watching TV. Pretty cool tubes they show in here too, like this projection tube for theater use. I've never seen anything like that up close. And finally we have this box. I have not opened it yet so I'm not entirely sure what's in here. Uh, I believe it's service info for, I think it might just be Admiral TVs from the early 50s. I think it was like a dollar or two dollars on eBay, so I figured what the hell, why not? Alright, so what have we got here? Rider Tech File. I don't think I've encountered this before. It looks like it's sort of the 
Rider equivalent of Sam's Photofax. This is uh, this is an Arvin. So what I think these are is yeah okay yeah, so this is the same stuff that would go in those giant Rider service manuals I've got that I showed in other videos. And this says seven dash five. So this would have been in volume seven of Riders. That's cool. Certainly more convenient than those huge binders, plus some of mine are in kind of crummy shape, and I'm missing some. So I hope there's some good stuff in here. Curtis Mathis color, it's a bit newer than the kind of stuff I usually work with. Hmm, Filka 52, 1443. I've got some similar sets. CBS TV. There's certainly some newer Admirals. 1978 models. Oh, transistors, well, oh, that's certainly newer than the stuff I usually work with. <laughs> All right. Hey, Kmart TV. I guess Admiral made TVs for Kmart at some point. Uh, uh, I'll keep digging through here, and if I see anything interesting, I'll record some more footage. I haven't finished looking through the whole box, but I've already found some awesome, awesome stuff that's going to be so helpful, I think. Um, first off, though, uh, a few interesting things here. There's some uh, original like owner's manuals from the companies, like Sentinel 402 owner's manual, and uh, one for Firestone. It's cool to get the, these original uh, manuals from the manufacturer. You know, you get riders and SAMs and stuff that's all like reproduced or reversed engineered info, but this is the genuine stuff from the manufacturers. For example, this, which is the genuine Admiral Service Manual for the 20X1 chassis, and the 20Y1, and the 20Z1. Well, these are used in a bunch of the Admirals I've got, like that 20X122 I was just talking about. That has the 20X1 chassis in it. I've restored three 20X1s. Uh, in fact... So... Oh, good service info about how, about how to do the alignments and adjust the sets and so on. This is also really cool. It's every model they ever made. From 48 to 62. I've just picked this stuff up in bits and pieces from websites like, uh, ah, geez, I think it's TV History or something like that, where there's a bunch of models and some photos, but I know there are definitely gaps on that website. You know, they don't have all the models listed. Well, here they all are, every set they ever made during that time frame. Of yeah, 48 to 62. This is also something very, very handy to have. It's a cross reference to Merit. I've got also got one for Thord Arson I got a while ago. So, for example, if you've got your original Admiral, whatever, transformer, and it's burned out and you need a replacement, well, like here's the original Admiral part number. Here, uh, are the Merit part numbers. It's handy because you go on eBay and you'll see people selling Merit transformers and they just have the Merit number. Well, without this cross-reference you wouldn't know which Merit you need. Now that I've got this, if I ever happen to need any of these, I can set up a search on eBay and see if one ever pops up. This could be interesting too, at least for just a little history on how they dealt with uh, poor reception back in the day and this I was very happy to see this is the service info for that little red and white Admiral TV I've got I'm happy to get this because I still have issues with that TV the horizontal linearity just stinks and there's no adjustment for it 
but I'm hoping with all this info that somewhere in here they have some tips and tricks for improving the horizontal linearity. The only service info I have, I think, is uh, I have the SAMs, which is a little sketchy when it comes to all of the setup details, how to make tweaks and adjustments. This looks very comprehensive. I finished going through the box and I think darn near every ad roll ever made is covered within these pages. Including I was also happy to find this, which is the 15C1 chassis, which is my other Admiral portable set. It's the silver one. So this will come in very handy when I get around to restoring it. Alright, that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this look at some more of my latest finds.